Right. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining this uh, special masterclass that we have for all of you. Uh, we have a few people who've joined us, but we are expecting a few more to come in. Um, my name is Smriti, and I am very happy to be hosting this session for you. If you are here, I want to say hi. Please leave a hi in the chat box. I know you guys are active. Joining me today to deliver this masterclass and to answer all of the doubts or questions that you guys might have for PMP, we have Zach with us. His name is Ahari Zach, and he's going to help you uh, through this very special interactive masterclass. So if you have questions at any point, you can leave them in the chat box or in the Q&A session, and we'd be happy to take it through uh, the masterclass so we could park it and keep it for the end where, you know, we'll give you dedicated time to answer these questions as well. Okay, let's quickly begin um, while we wait for the rest of the people to join. Which superhero would you say that would make the best project manager? Give me your answers, chat box. According to you, who would you pick as a superhero and why would he or she make the best project manager? Zach, you can answer too. <laughs> let's let's wait for some of these guys to answer. I will give my opinion. All right. Someone posted in the chat box is disabled. Can uh, one of you help us? We'll we're doing that right away. Okay, it's enabled now. Repeating the question for everyone's benefit, which superhero would you say would make the best project manager and why? Like in one of my previous sessions, someone said Batman because of all the you know, gadgets that he uses and how fast he can be. So that's just one example. You guys can give me your answer as well. Oh, well, I thought Mary Joy is one of the superheroes. She's calling herself that. Hi, Mary. Uh, we see that you joined us from Saudi. Do you call yourself a superhero? Are you the best project manager that your organization has? Can you tell us why? <laughs> I think she's just saying that she's here. <laughs> or maybe she's just saying hi. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody <laughs> have any opinion on this? <laughs> She says superwoman. Yes, I agree. Well, every woman is super in that way. You know, we do so many things. So we should be the ideal project managers of the world. Any other answers from all of you? We have about 18 people who've joined us uh, this evening. You know, warmed up. Still very shy. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Afifa. She says, Wonder Woman. Do you want to tell me why? We have uh, woman power so far. Nothing for the men. Yeah. They're all still a little shy. Yep. Still okay, up. that's okay. Someone oh, yeah. said Rama from Ramayanam. Correct. Great. Yeah. So let me give my opinion on this. Huh? What I Go think for it. the superhero that would be best to be a project manager. I think it would be Captain America. I like to watch superhero movies, the uh, mm -hmm. Marvels as well as DC. So from Marvel, I would think it would be Captain America, mainly because you know she lead a team. He can form a good, highly skilled team members, um, manage them, work together to defeat the enemy. That's from Marvel. From DC, our thing would be Batman, as in the Justice League movie. Mm -hmm. He also formed a team uh, 
guide the team to defeat the enemy. So I think these two are pretty good project managers. Great. Well, since we got some answers and since we had Zach give his opinion as well, I'd like to welcome all of you once again to this very special masterclass that we have for you. And the problem that we are bringing to the fore is to help you understand how you can achieve this BMP certification in five weeks. Oh, by the so way, sorry again, to interrupt, so uh, Smithy, someone before mentioned that we Batman, he, he plans everything. Yes. <laughs> Someone also has an opinion that women have high stress tolerance than men, <laughs> which it could be true, but men take it silently, I, I suppose. <laughs> All right. Um, thank you so much for joining us this evening. I have a quick uh, question to ask all of you. So I'm going to quickly launch the poll and I need you to answer. We'd like to get to know you. So the first question is, where are you from? We have some options out there. If you can see the poll, I'd like you to answer. Okay, thank you, everybody. Uh, are there any more people who'd like to answer the first question? Okay. Can you see the second question as well? You've answered it. Okay, have you previously attempted the PMP set? Uh, certification exam. Yes, I have. No, this will be my first attempt and I'm not familiar with the BMP certification. Thank you so much for answering these questions. I'm going to quickly share the results of the poll. If you can see, we have two people from Singapore and I think I know both of them really well. We have about 14 people from India. Great. That's a great number from India and uh, a few people, three of them and from other APAC countries and the rest of the world. Thank you so much for answering these questions. Let's get on with this masterclass. All right, so uh, like I mentioned, my name is Smithy Anthony and I am your host for this evening. Um, we have Zahari Zak, who is uh, going to be mentoring this class. He is a PMI authorized PM PMP instructor. He's a certified actor trainer and also a certified scrum master. Zach, do you want to say a few words? Yeah, uh, good mix of people we have in the session. That's great. Mm -hmm. So I'm uh, most people call me Zach. All right, easy to remember, short and sharp. Um, as mentioned, uh, authorized PMP instructor. I have. Uh, more than 26 years of industry experience. Um, for the past almost 10 years, I've been um, conducting project management related courses. Um, I'm also a certified Scrum Master. Uh, it's always good to be both uh, in this current uh, course. For now, uh, we should all focus on the PMP certification first. All right. As for now, um, over to you, Smriti. Thank you, Zach. And can we have like a round of applause for Zach for joining us? Drum roll. Thank oh, you so much for uh, you, giving us you. your time and making this masterclass happen. Okay. Uh, we answered this question already. Have you previously attempted the PMP certification exam? And most of you have said no, that this would be your first time. And that's why we're here to tell you that PMP is here to stay. Okay, so if you've not done this before, if it's your first time, you should definitely go ahead with Knowledge Hat because we have so many things to offer. And especially for those of you who've, who are attending today's program, at this end of this session, we will give you a PMP toolkit, which will have some case studies and uh, mock tests that you can go through. We'll give you one free simulation exam. A simulation exam is very close to that of the main PMP examination and also a 30 minute one-on-one uh, -on -one session with one of our PMP mentors, okay? How many of you know the value of the PMP certification? If you can quickly answer that question for me. All right, thank you for answering the question. Quite a few people know how important PMP is in today's world and a couple of them are new. Don't worry, we have answers for all of you. All right, so the value of PMP is listed on your screen. 
if you can see someone who does a PMP could reach an average annual salary of $107,000. It's an in-demand certification across the Fortune 500. You get to earn 40% higher than non-certified uh, people and the job opportunities are growing consistently at a rate of 23% annually. So this, these are just some facts for you to keep at the back of your mind. There are a lot of things that you will learn and understand as well. Next question for you. What do you believe is the main deterrent in um, people? Like people take up the PMP training, but don't really give the examination. What do you think is the primary reason for that? Someone said cost of the examination, all right. Lack, lack of time to prepare, difficulty of the examination also. And if you have any other options, you can let us know too. So I think here again, we have uh, a shared opinion. People think that, you know, it's difficult because of lack of time. The examination is, uh, cost is quite high and the difficulty level of the examination. Well, again, we are going to find you solutions. Okay. So while we spoke about the deterrence, we also want to let you know that there are some facts out there where um, a 2022 study by PMI showed that only 65% of PMP certified professionals actually renew their certification after three years. Uh, I'm sure most of you know, once you finish the examination and attain your certification, it's valid for three years. And then every three years, you'll have to renew your certification by collecting 60 PDUs. PDU stands for Professional Development Units. We'll get to what it is and why in, in a few slides from now. But yes, there is, um, you know, you, you will have to renew your certification every three years. The second fact is only 38% of the respondents who received the PMP training actually took the PMP examination. So in my experience at Knowledge Hut as well, a lot of people come to us for training, you know, and uh, they do train really well. But when it comes to the examination, they hold it off because you have like a year's time to write the examination after you get the voucher from PMI. But apart from that, people also don't really dedicate time, which is why we're having this masterclass. And bringing this problem to the fore saying that, hey, you know what, if you follow our five week study plan, we're telling you, you can pass for sure. So you need to make that commitment and believe me, uh, you will be able to do it. And some of the reasons why people have said that, uh, you know, they don't give the examination, like you answered as well is the lack of preparation time, exam cost, and the difficulty level of the examination. According to a 2018 PMI study, the global pass rate for the PMP exam was only 50.56%. But we're changing that slowly. We're trying to get more people to write the examination and more people to also pass. We have a great pass percentage at Knowledge Hat. We have about 98% of our participants almost always passing uh, the PMP certification. And our study guide will actually help you get there as well. So in a sense, what we're trying to say is that there are a lot of people who are taking the PMP examination and not many of them actually go for the exam, but Knowledge Hat is here to push you to do that examination and get PMP certified. Uh, we already spoke about this question. So let me hand over the floor to Zach, Zahari Zach, who is our mentor for this masterclass. He's going to help you with all of the questions that you might have about PMP and also take you through some mock tests and, you know, make you understand how important a five-week study plan is. Over to you, Zach. Thank you, Smithy. So I'm so honored to be here. So many of you. All right. So we're going to guide you along, guide you along all right, to understand about the PMP as a uh, we mentioned, I think we can go to the next slide, uh, Smithy. Um, as we, you know, go along uh, this session, we noticed from the previous poll about, you know, why so many people did not take the exam even after attending the training. You know, they have a uh, fear of uh, exam is too difficult, fear of not being able to have spend enough time. All right, and also of course the expensive exam. <laughs> of course, once you are well prepared the expensive exam, if you can tackle it the first time, pass it on the first time, then it's a, a well worth the investment, all right? But other than that, we will guide you along, right? So these are some key challenges that you have and roadblocks. Firstly, you may not be aware about PMP in the first place, which 
It means some of you are not aware. All right, so we're going to make you aware. Once you're aware, you'll be more prepared as well, mentally, yeah? not just physically. All right, so let's look at some of the challenges in the next slide. So if you were to go through this challenge on your own, huh? go through the, walk through this journey on your own, there'll be a lot of questions like this that you may be thinking of, right? Where to start? No plan, right? So attending this session alone is a very, very good first step, right? Uh, the next step, of course, if you can if you enroll, the, uh, attend the course with knowledge heart, that is an important second step, right? Uh, once you have start this journey, you will come up with a plan once you're aware. What is PMP? What does it entails? What kind of knowledge you need? What are the reference materials? Uh, because one of the point here, people may say, lack of materials, where am I going to start? Actually, the other opposite is also true. Uh, once you start, you may find there's too much materials. So which materials should I focus on? You know, uh, If you're on your own, it's hard to get all these answers. All right, so once you attend the training with Knowledge Heart, you get the guidance from the instructors. We also have SMEs to guide you along, even after the course, right? Help you to focus on which area. So going through the five uh, weeks plan also will help you to focus on what are the areas that you should uh, base on, right? Um, PMI exam content outline, right? If you're not aware of PMP, you may not understand this, but we're gonna make you aware. Um, PMI exam content outline. Uh, for short, we call it the ECO. It's actually the PMI exam syllabus. Huh? So you must be familiar with this content outline. It breaks up into three domains. Right? First one is the uh, people domain. Second one is the process domain. Third one is the business acumen. These three domains are aligned to the PMI uh, talent triangle for project management. Right? So talent triangle, one side of the triangle uh, is the um, leadership skills, right? So very important to have leadership skills. As I mentioned, when we talk about superhero, you have to be able to form a team and lead the team, all right? The most challenging part of project management is managing the people, all right? So we must have very good leadership skills. That's one of the talent triangle and aligned to the ECO on people management, all right? Domain. Okay. Another side is the technical project management, all right? Uh, be good in the processes, understand what you need to perform, understand the whole overall framework, right? Uh, PMI framework, right? You will understand this in detail as when you attend the training, right? Uh, so that's another side of time triangle. Huh? There's the people, uh, sorry, there's the process domain, all right? There are 49 processes actually, just to add on to that. So a lot of processes you need to be familiar. Um, what are the process? What do you do in the process? What kind of tools and techniques that you can use to perform that process and uh, what is the outcome of that process? So that is process domain, all right? And the last uh, triangle is the business acumen. You need to be understand, uh, so that's another talent triangle, which is understanding the business strategy. When we manage project, a project must bring value and benefits to the company, right? So as a project manager, we must be aware of what the company is about. What is the company strategy? How does our project align with the company strategy? Right, so all these are the three um, domains in the uh, exam content outline, the ECO, all right? 42% of the exam questions will be um, under people domain, 50% will be process domain, and 8% will be the uh, business domain, all right? And so it's important to understand this, and of course we'll cover more in detail uh, when we get into the training. So. All right, um, maybe you are thinking no knowledge of how to apply the learned material. After any training, you, you know, or rather you read books, maybe, right? And you don't understand how to apply this, how to apply in the project management, and also how to apply in the PMP exam, right? So we will help you again, right? Uh, in the training, we will help you to understand what is the process about. And especially for the exam, PMP exam, mostly a situational question based on certain scenarios, all right? So it tests your understanding. By reading the question, the scenario, you must understand what process are they referring to, okay? And what SPM should we do based on the scenario? Right? So we help you to understand all this and select the right option, especially for the PMP exam. 
Well, you have, maybe you wonder when will I be ready by taking all these steps, uh, understanding what is PMP. Um, um, in this session, okay, you will start that step. Attending the training uh, is a major part of it, all right? And then follow the five weeks plan that we will talk about later, all right? You will know yourself, you're already at the end of it. Uh, for the exam, you have to apply online in the PMI.org website right, for PMP. So you may not be familiar with it as well. So we have SMEs, we have instructors, we have mentors who can help you in this application process as well. Right? So no worries. Uh, all this, you will have the right assistant. Right? You will be prepared once you go through the uh, step that we will talk about. Next slide, Smriti. All right, so regarding the uh, PMP exam content, um, this is actually referring to the uh, course materials, right? Um, when you attend the course, the training, you will get a standardized, sorry, a standard training material from PMI. Right? At the start of 2021, PMI has standardized the training material. Prior to that, all training providers create their own training materials based on the PMI framework, right? By the start of 2021, PMI is standardized. So you get a standardized training material covering these six modules, or they call it lessons. Huh? And all the materials are based on the PIMBOK. Okay. Uh, for those who have not heard of PIMBOK, it means Project Management Body of Knowledge. Right? That is from PMI. Huh? The latest edition of PIMBOK is um, seventh edition, right? Um, most of the processes of materials actually come from the sixth edition, right? Now, if you have any question, I just want to stop here for one and, and say that if you have any questions, just please raise the questions, huh? uh, because I always believe that uh, striking the iron while it's hot. So something, if there's a question in your head, just uh, raise the question, all right? Uh, if it's Otherwise, I think that maybe sometimes either you forget questions or maybe become irrelevant later on. So just ask a question and Smriti, you can just uh, uh, interrupt me anytime, all right? If there's any question. Sure, Zach. So coming back to this, it's based on the PMI framework, based on the PMBOK. Um, most of the content will be in this training material uh, during the training. And the training materials also are aligned to the exam content outline. Remember the document I mentioned about ECO? All right, in the CO, you have three domains and what the list of important tasks to be done in each domain as a project manager, all right? So whatever is covered will be aligned to that exam content outline, right? So you know what you will learn in the training and how to apply it based on the exam content outline. Okay. So sixth lesson, we will begin with uh, some foundational uh, basic project management knowledge, uh, like for example, the definition of a project. How do you know what you are doing? Can be considered as a project or not? All right, we'll talk about that. And also the four main development approach or life cycle, the predictive, iterative, incremental, and agile. All these will be included in the current SM content outline. All right, so we will cover that in the training as well. Uh, prior to um, team box six, the main focus is on traditional project management, right? Or in IT, they call it waterfall, All right? But now, from starting of team box six, agile has been added. All right, so the training material will cover both all kinds of life cycle huh? uh, to understand the various situation on when you use traditional when you use Agile. And based on the exam uh, scenario, you'll be able to differentiate, all right? You get the right option. All right, also mention about the business environment, how to justify a project. Start with feasibility study, come up with a business case. Why, why do this project? What benefit will it bring to the company? All right, what's the current problem? Why are you trying to solve? Why you want to implement this? Why not just do the things the same way? All right, so all this will be covered. Huh? And then you will start the project, which is in lesson two. This is like kicking off the project. 
So you learn on how to come up with a document that justify the project, right? So once this document should be referred to as project charter, right, is approved, then the PM should start the project. Otherwise, he should not, right? And PM may not be involved in all these early stages of feasibility study. There are not all PM are involved. So what, but we still need to understand what are the process happening, uh, how to identify key stakeholders, how to justify the project. Uh, so all these people learn in the training. Right? Once the project has been justified, you know, as a PM, we can kick off. So we move into lesson three. Lesson three talk about planning. Plan. It's very important to plan, all right? As a project manager, that's our, our main role, actually, yeah? main duty. Okay? Plan based on all the knowledge areas, all right? This is the, based on PMI framework. Yeah? We have five process group, initiating, planning, executing, monitoring control, and closing, right? Five process group. So actually these lessons also are aligned to the process group, right? So, so lesson two is more or less the initiating process group. Lesson three is on the planning process group. So plan for scope, plan for schedule, plan for costs, plan for risk, plan for resources, plan for communications, plan for procurement, plan for quality, and how to plan for engaging the stakeholders and how to integrate all of them together. So that'll be covered here. Once we have plan, uh, of course, this is all based on traditional, uh, maybe you'll be thinking. Uh, uh, you have to adapt this into Agile if you choose the Agile approach. So once you have the plan, you can execute. That's very much in lesson four, leading the team, lead the team to execute the work that you have planned for. Right? So you have to uh, perform some of the processes under executing process group, acquiring the resources, both human resource and physical resource, developing the resource, which is the responsibility of PM. All right, ensure they have all the right uh, skill set capabilities. All right, otherwise you need to mentor them, guide them, train them, huh? right. and manage the team throughout the project while they are performing their work. And we move to lesson five: support the project team, and also this is more or less aligned to the monitoring control. All right, uh, checking the progress of the project, reporting on the progress. All right. If you check, but you don't report, there's no visibility. It's hard to ensure accountability and commitment, all right? And so we'll cover all that here. And finally, on lesson six, perform the activities to formally close the project, all right? Uh, so it's not just disband the team, implement, disband the team and enjoy. Huh? So there are some activities that need to be done to formally close the project, right? So these are, the training material, oh, sorry, these are the areas that we cover in training. Of course, you'll have a uh, training material on this as well. Okay. Um, any question? If not, we can move on to the next slide. I suppose everyone is holding back to ask questions later, right? To clear doors, as I mentioned, huh? uh, it's, it helps when you can clear doors huh, regarding PMP and understanding uh, what you will, what will benefit you and have any training and all that, all right, to prepare you for the PMP exam. Okay, so we come to this uh, five weeks study plan, right? Recommended by Knowledge Heart, all right? So week one, day one to three, minimum of six hours recommended. For those who have not, uh, submitted the application form, you can download this thing called PMP Certification Handbook that describes the exam structure, how to apply, how much it costs, it's all about PMP exam, huh? um, how to renew, how to cancel, how to take the exam, right? You can download this uh, PMP, uh, PMP Certification Handbook. It's very helpful, uh, useful for you to refer. Of course, you will guide along, even if you don't have this huh? from Knowledge Hunt. 
day four to seven, minimum of eight hours for those uh, days, right? You can download the pinball guide. Um, if you don't have it in your hands at the moment, you can always download for free once you are we have become a PMI member, right? So we'll join as a PMI member at least for one year, of course there's a fee, but this fee uh, will help you to uh, get discount during the PMI exam. So it's still worth, worthwhile to be a PMI member, at least for the first year when you are trying to um, go for the exam. So you can get all the, um, sorry, can you go back? <laughs> you can get the, uh, Previous slide, okay, thanks. So you can get the uh, Pinbox 6 edition. Pinbox 6 edition comes with the Agile Practice Guide. It comes together if you want to purchase outside. All right, of course, you can download for free. If you are a PMI member for the PMI.org website, you can get the PMI uh, Pinbox 7 edition. However, the 7 edition is not really sufficient no, for you to, to have just one book for reference, okay? Um, you need to also, if you have only seven edition, then you can, you need to refer to the book called Process Guide. Sorry, a Process Group, huh? a Practice Guide. And this will, um, this will help you if you only have seven edition. Otherwise, seven edition is not sufficient. But if you have six edition, that's more or less sufficient already. Okay? Of course, uh, you know, uh, as we say in Singapore, if you are kiasu, it's good to have everything. Right. Um, someone asked asking eight hours per day. No, it's eight hours for the three days. Huh? Right. Uh, eight hours per day, I think is 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 not really possible uh, for me at least. <laughs> All right. So um, you can download and you can read through, or you know, you can also overlap. Huh? Uh, this steps is not just sequential. Huh? You can also overlap. If you already have done all the understand about the uh, PMP exam, you don't need to read through the whole certificate, you already understand that, then you can start the PMBOK, uh, reading PMBOK earlier, right? You can overlap. Okay, next slide, Smithy. All right, week two, you can deep dive into all the process and knowledge areas, all right? Really, really read through and revise Revise the training materials, uh, revise the PMBOK, all right? Uh, you can go through videos that we recommend here. There's a Eileen Ellis YouTube, which go through knowledge areas by knowledge areas. It's helpful for you to go through them, all right? Um, of course, in addition to reading the knowledge areas in the PMBOK, right? and also you have, uh, if, if you uh, attend training through Knowledge Heart, you will have uh, recorded videos of the training, right? You can also go through those videos. So really, really read through and uh, watch videos and uh, recall and recap and revise whatever you have learned during the training. Don't worry if you don't understand initially, right? Maybe during the training, you may still have a lot of questions, but as you go through and revise and recap, you, you will start to come back more and more. Okay, next slide, Smithy. Week three, day 15 to 20, continue with your revision video, recorded training videos, training materials. Make sure you can understand most of it. No? You can align okay, how the process works, how does it link to each other? How does the knowledge areas align? Okay? How the process group aligns? Right? What is the concept? Um, there are 49 processes, uh, just to add on. And uh, they all align to the process group and knowledge areas, no? right? If you attend the training, there'll be something called the process chart. It's a matrix that show alignment between the process processes to the process group and the knowledge area, right? Uh, that'll be very helpful for you to have uh, one page to refer to, okay? So understand the processes, how does it align to the process? Group, how does it align to the knowledge areas? What does the process do, right? As I mentioned, uh, understand what is the process? What does the process do? Uh, what are the tools and techniques that you can use to perform that process? And also what is the outcome at the end of the process? 
example, I'll give you an example. Huh? Let's say one process called collect requirements. Okay, I'm sure you're all familiar as a project manager, you need to collect requirements, right? So there's a process called collect, collect requirements. There's a name. So the purpose, of course, is for you to gather the requirement. Huh? You have to perform this process. You have to meet with your stakeholders, gather what, it, what do they need uh, for this particular solution, right? So you're collecting requirements from them. And um, we also learn some of the tools and techniques that we can use to perform this process, maybe by interviewing the stakeholders or benchmarking other similar products or form a focus group, facilitate a meeting, brainstorming. So these are the various techniques that you can use. And at the end of performing the process, what is what do you get? So what's the output? Huh? So the output is you have a requirements document that you list down all the requirements that you have gathered. Right? So each of this process, actually in the PIMBOK, there is something called inputs, tools and techniques and output. Right? ITTOs for short. Okay, so we roughly need to know the ITTOs for each process and their 49 processes. I'm not trying to add fear to you. <laughs> Probably you're thinking, wow, 49 processes, so many of them. Right? So don't worry, right? You will learn uh, how to understand all of them. Okay, once you have understood all this, uh, you have to practice. All right. So day 21 to 23, um, we have uh, provided some recommended uh, link here for you to have some free question bank, practice the typical PMP exam questions, all right? Um, of course, when you enroll with Knowledge Heart, we also provide some free simulated exam questions. And also there is access to an application where you have a lot of, uh, uh, a few mock exams huh, that you can try out, right? So these are all provided for you. So no worries, all right? Just to add in here, yeah. for those of you who attend this masterclass and are here till the end of the session, we are going to be giving you one free simulation exam. All right. So stay till the end and get this goodie. Fantastic. Okay, next slide, Smriti. All right, week four, continue the practice. You know, in, uh, in uh, real estate, uh, when we are buying a house, um, or selling a house, there's three important words, right? Can anyone uh, tell me what are three important words in real estate when buying a house or selling a house? Anyone? Nobody want to try? Very shy class, 18 of you. Very shy class, Very nobody shy. is answering. <laughs> <laughs> No questions and no answers. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So the, the words I'm looking for is location, location, location. Right? Yeah. Finally, I see someone, Danny. Danny, well done, Danny. Thanks for sharing. So location, location, location. Huh? All right. So for attempting PMP exam, the three words will be practice, practice, practice. Right? So continue to solve questions huh, in the week four, right? Try at least 1,000 questions. Why, why do we need to do this, right? When we attempt all these practice questions, not only are we revising, all right? Because every time we attempt questions, we are trying to recall some of the knowledge we have learned, right? At the same time, we will understand the structure of the questions, right? We understand the structure of the options. Okay? So most of it are multiple choice questions, by the way. All right. Um, I guess I'll just add on regarding the exam itself. All right. So um, there's uh, you have to answer 180 questions within 230 minutes, right? It's about three hundred and three hours and 15 minutes, 180 questions. Huh? So once you start to practice, you will understand. The structure. And not only that, you will see some similar questions. So there are some questions that are quite similar. Um, maybe you can see that uh, it's quite important. You also will learn not just understanding the correct answers, 
most almost all of these simulated questions will also give you the answer as well as explanation. Uh, so you understand why is it wrong? Why is it correct? Uh, so you can refer back to the materials that you have. You can refer back uh, to the training materials, refer back to the pinball to understand better. So it helps you to revise uh, pr while practicing, revise, and also look back eh, and see the facts from the training materials and from pinball as well. Right? So continue to uh, practice as in questions. Right? I know, I mean, I've been connecting GMP class for so long. Um, I'm happy to hear quite a lot of them pass when they attempt the exam question, uh, sorry, as attempt the exam. And I also know there are few who fail because they did not practice enough, right? Uh, because they fall into this trap thinking that they have enough experience. So after the training, they book the exam date and go for it. Right? So it's a very risky thing to do, right? So practice, right? So continue on the week four, day 27, 29, when you are practicing, identify the areas that you find difficult. Do you based on the explanation of the right answers and the wrong answers, all right? You can see okay, what are the weak areas and also revise on those weak areas, right? You can revise through the pin box, training material, or the videos, okay? Day, day 30, 31, it's good to take a full-length simulation test, huh? a full-length mock exam. Like I say, you know, for some of you, you can always start earlier, huh? depending on your speed, right? When you try out the mock exam, you're not just learning and uh, attempting a same question, it also, you also need to get a feel, right? So three, three hours, 50 minutes is a very, very long time. And the question is a lot of questions to answer, all right? It, it actually is um, mentally and physically challenging. So you must try out the mock exam huh? so that you get a feel and be prepared, right? Mentally as well as physically. As mentioned, knowledge hard as a full length uh, simulation exam, all right? So you have a few of them to practice, so no worries, all right? So you have all these um, tools that's available to you. Right? Okay, um, week five, right? So by week four, you should be more or less completed in terms of knowledge based on the materials that you already have. You have read through PIMBOK, you have understand the ECO, right? you have revised based on the training materials, all right? So you also have practice, all right? And uh, it's, it's like a cycle, huh? practice, review, practice, review. Huh? Right? So week five is more or less to Ensure the administrative part has been completed, right? Uh, you are more, like, more or less ready, right? So day 32 to 35 is, okay. Um, review the knowledge areas, of course, review all the knowledge again. And also in project management based on the PIMBOK and PMI framework, there are a lot of terms and terminologies. Okay, we call it the project management lingo, right? You speak in project management terms. So a lot of words that you will learn huh? use in project management. So in PIMBOK, there is a glossary page. Of course, PIMBOK is a very, very thick book, right? About 800 pages. Um, the one that you need to refer to actually only half of it, right? And um, they have a glossary at the end of it. So all the definitions of all the terms is there, all right? It, when you attend the course, Part of the training materials also include a glossary. Uh, so you have a document to refer to it, uh, not just based on, uh, not just, not that you must have PIMBOK, but you also have a list of glossaries, all right? List of definition of terms 
and terminologies right, during the training as part of training material. All right, next uh, day 36 to 38. Again, if you have not tried, make sure you take at least two full length mock exam. Right? Helps you to pace yourself, right? Day 39, quickly um, review again your weak areas uh, just to make sure uh, these are all like uh, cleaning up, all right? Loose pieces. Zach, we have a question. Yep. What are right. all the materials required to study? What are all the materials to study? Okay. Yeah. Right. You have the reference book yeah, from Pimbok. Okay. Uh, you have the Pimbok 6th edition. You have the Agile Practice Guide. You have the Pimbok 7th edition. Right. So these three. A reference book from PMI. Uh, there's also an additional book which is called Process Groups, uh, a study guide. Like I said, it is if you don't have PIM Box 6, right? Um, then you need to have the process group together with uh, seven edition. However, if you have PIM Box 6 and a job is got, actually, to me personally, yeah, uh, you don't really need PIM Box 7. As I mentioned, it all depends on how risk averse are you, okay? If you want to be very, very sure, then refer to all the reference book, right? And of course you have the training material as well, okay? However, if you want to not go through all, okay? Uh, this is my opinion, huh? You need to have pin box six, agile practice guide, okay? And you have your training materials and do lots of practice, okay? Does that help? Yes, thanks, Zach. Another question. Mm -hmm. What is the total exam time again? Please uh, let us know. And then the total number of questions, are all of these MCQ? And can we physically go uh, to the exam center to give the exam? Okay, all right, good question. So again, take note, you have to answer 180 questions within three hour, 50 minutes, right? They put that 230 minutes, right? So roughly three hour, 50 minutes. 180 questions. Mostly are MCQs, right? Mostly. Most requires one correct answer or one option for you to select. However, there are questions that you need to select more than one answers, which they will indicate in the question. They will say choose two or choose three. So you must be careful huh? because I have, during practice, during our class, uh, there are people who miss this word, like choose two or choose three. Huh? Uh, they end up, they only choose one, just like any other question. So be careful. Uh, some questions um, have, you have to choose two correct answers or three correct answers, but mostly a one. Huh? Uh, this is quite new uh, from 2021. Okay? Previously, it's always MCQ with one correct answer. All right, so take note of this. And also um, take note when you read the exam question, make sure you are aware of um, reverse questions like is not or accept. Right? So take note of that. Um, did I answer the question? Did I miss something? Uh, can we go physically to the exam center to give the exam? Okay, yeah, okay. I would recommend that you go to the exam center to take the exam. When you submit your application online, you will probably get a response from PMI to see whether you approve or not within two to within three to five working days, right? So your time start then. Huh? You have one hour to pass the exam once they have accepted you, right? They will give you instruction. You can take the exam anywhere which is convenient to you online, right? Of course, there is someone uh, invigilated to observe you all the time, or you can go to the exam center. I would recommend actually to go to the exam center because it's less risk. Okay? When you are doing online, it's very risky. Of course, they will check your surrounding. They always observe you. Uh, you know, if you are looking to the left, to the right, to the bottom, they think that you might be copying. You know, they might decide to disqualify you. 
right? The exam center, all these are taken care of, right? So you don't have someone watching you all the time, all right? Of course, you um, cannot go in with a lot of things. Huh? You have to put it, only you and your clothing will go inside the exam center. The rest will be in the lockers, all right? So I would recommend that you go to the exam center, actually. Of course, you can take it online uh, at your own convenience if you want to. Great. Uh, are there any breaks during the examination? You are allowed two breaks if you are doing online, all right? Uh, doing computer based, you are allowed two breaks. Right? But if you are doing paper based, there is an option for paper based, which is very, very uncommon. No? But there will be 10 minutes break that you can take. Um, yeah, there will be 10 minutes break. Another question about how many study hours are required? Um, based on the steps that we have presented here. Yeah. Um, 100 hours is sufficient or uh, 150 hours is required to study? Mm, I guess we have to calculate number of hours here. I have a <laughs> <laughs> I uh, just want to let all of you know that this this five week study plan with the breakdown of hours will be given to you once you uh, register with us and we will give you the step by step guide. So I guess we've not put the number of hours, but 40 days of your time with about four, three to four hours per day is what we're assuming. Okay. Yeah, a couple of more questions. Uh, are there any... Uh, tips to remember like inputs, tools or techniques that they'll have to keep in uh, at the back of their mind when they okay. do PMP. All right. I guess whoever is your child, I hope you don't mind, <laughs> no offense. I guess you may have attended previous courses huh, a long time ago. Mm -hmm. A lot of exam questions previously are memory based. So it requires a lot of memory. But nowadays the exam, you have to understand. So don't worry about memory so much. Huh? You have to understand. So you don't need to uh, remember the number of knowledge areas by remembering all the letters, uh, remember certain acronym based on the tools and techniques. So those strategy no longer required, right? Uh, so understand the process, right? Instead of memorizing. Memorizing actually does not really help. Huh? Got it. Um, how many attempts are allowed in case of failure of the first attempt? Okay, all right, good question. So, of course, hopefully, yeah, I wish everyone will pass on the first try, uh, mainly because it's costly, right? <laughs> so they want to pass the first time. And that's why Knowledge Heart has this plan for you uh, to ensure that you pass the first time, right? If you're not at touch wood, you have three tries actually within one year, right? Once they have accepted you, the year, the, the, the time starts then. Huh? So we have one year to pass the exam with three tries. If you fail the first time, unfortunately, you can book a second exam okay? and a third exam if you fail again. But you only have to try. Huh? If not, if you don't pass within that one year, you will have to wait. Uh, you have to wait for another year before you apply again. Right. And just also to let you know, if you get the PMI membership while you buy the examination, if you buy the membership, not only will you have access to the PM Box 7, but also where if in the chance that you fail in the first attempt, you can always rebuy it at a discounted price. So it's good to have the PMI membership as well, like to buy that when you're buying the examination voucher. Another question, Zach, for you, I don't have core PM experience, but have industry experience of 14 years. Can I give this exam? All right. Now, when you apply, you have to give your project. You have to describe your project, huh? project name, how long it takes, and uh, and describe what are you doing or how you are managing the project. Okay, what is the project about? If you don't have enough, unfortunately, you cannot. They may not accept your application. Okay, they may reject. Right. So you must have uh, three years at least for them to accept. Right, based on your application, they will review your application. Huh? And when you submit application, you must describe yourself as leading and managing the project. All right, do not describe as you are part of the team. This is the project I'm in, I'm part of the team. Most likely they will reject, right? Of course, Knowledge Hub will help and guide in terms of this application, no worries. Huh? 
but you need to have that uh, three years of experience if you are a degree holder. Yeah. If sorry, just to add on, uh, mm -hmm. uh, if you don't have enough, there is a certification which is project management by PMI. It's called CAPM, right? Uh, that one doesn't require the years of experience. You can start there and then continue with PMP after that. All right. Yeah. Actually, if you join the training session with Knowledge Hat, we have a dedicated section where our trainers will take you through the exam application process, um, you know, the jargon that needs to be used, how to articulate your application so that it doesn't get rejected. Of course, there are prerequisites to taking the PMP examination for those of you who are not aware. Uh, the first thing is that either you will have to have a degree, a master's or a diploma. If you are a degree, a degree or diploma holder, you need to have about five years of project management experience, a master's uh, holder, three years of project management experience. Apart from this, it's a mandate that you attend the 35 hours of training that we trainers uh, providers like us will give you. Uh, the 35 hours are called PDUs, professional development units or contact hours, which is a prerequisite for you to give the examination. And the third thing is um, that you need to be eligible to you know, give the exam which is your experience in terms of uh, project management. But anyway, our trainers will definitely guide you. And if you go through our training and if you go through the mock tests and simulation exams, we are telling you that you will pass the examination of the first go. That's the guarantee that we have. Another question for you, Zach. Uh, sorry, Smithy. Sorry, yeah. Smithy. Before, before you go to the next question. Yeah. Uh, uh, just now you mentioned about degree need five years. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we need to check on that, you know? Because yeah. even diploma is five years. Degree should be three years. Okay, degree and master's three years and diploma yes. five years. I stand okay. corrected. Thank you, Zach. Welcome. Right. Uh, the next question here is, I am currently a Scrum Master. Can I apply for PMI? You are a Scrum Master. That's good. Congratulations. Well done. However, the requirement is still similar. If you have a degree, you need a five years of project management experience. So if a degree, you need three years of project management experience. If you have a diploma, you need five years. So the criteria is still the same. Huh? The years of experience and also the 35 hours of training. Once you attend the training, you already have that part already covered. It's just the number of years. So if you are a Scrum Master, you still need to describe huh? how many years of project management experience do you have. Right. Great. Shall we go on to the next slide, Zach? Yes. Let's go. All right. All right. So, so the last part is again, we already mentioned. Can you go back to the previous slide? Sure. Oops. There you go. All right. So, uh, again, all these uh, guidance will be given by our subject matter experts. Huh? And uh, on the final day, please relax. All right. Okay. Go on to the next one. Okay. Just time we mentioned about this, uh, about this point, right? Uh, some of the tips and strategies, and uh, as I mentioned, don't memorize. Huh? There's no need to memorize, actually. Of course, having a good memory helps, but the important thing is understanding, right? The exam question is testing your understanding. Huh? So you don't need to have a lot of various strategies to memorize. Right? Must understand what the process is about, okay? What techniques can you use to perform that process? And what's the outcome of that process, okay? So when I took the PMP certification exam, that was a long, long time ago, all right? Uh, so you probably can tell my age, all right? So um, a lot of memory work at that time. Huh? A lot of direct questions. So if you don't remember, that's it, all right? So what now is different. Huh? Now it's testing understanding, right? Understand the logic behind the process. Last time we have to remember the ITTO, huh? What are the list of inputs? What are the list of tools and techniques? What are the list of outputs, right? But now, rest assured, don't have to so much worry. They don't require all that. Important thing is understand, right? Of course, we say practice, practice, practice. It helps a lot in your revision, not just about the knowledge, about understanding the question, the options, you view incorrect answers, so when you practice, you don't, if you get it right, that's good, but don't just walk away. Also must understand why you get it right, why the other options are wrong, right? If you get the incorrect answer, of course, it's the same thing, huh? Understand why it's incorrect, why the other one is correct. 
and all the simulated exam questions will come with all this explanation. Later, we'll see some example. All right, as mentioned also, manage your time. It's quite a long, um, three and hours and 15 minutes answering all those questions. When we are after a couple hours, if you are tired physically or mentally, it's hard to focus. So make sure you practice a full length mock exam as well. Next slide, Smith. Okay, other tips, focus on key areas. Uh, there are quite um, important areas that tend to have a lot more questions. Areas like risk management, scope management, cost management, and time management. Now, scope management, cost management, time management, this is key for all projects, right? Managing your scope, managing the budget, managing the schedule, right? So of course, it's important for you to understand this area. When you manage your project, you always have to compare against these three areas, okay? Whether the solution is meeting the scope, whether you are managing a project according to the budget, and whether you are managing the project based on the schedule. So these are, of course, the main areas. And of course, the other one is risk. Risk can impact any of these three. So understand the risk management processes. Right? Make sure you uh, can really understand the processes behind these areas. Now, I mentioned no need to memorize, but we still need to understand uh, some of the possible ITTOs. Huh? Not so much about inputs. Like inputs, actually, you can figure out based on logic. But you also need to be familiar with some of the tools and techniques that are available for you to perform that process. right? And like I mentioned, understand what's the output. Because at the end of the performing the process, what do you get? Most of the time, it's a document. What document is it? It could be the product itself, but most of the time it's document. When you finish the process, there will be a document that you created, project document. Huh? So be aware of that. Okay. And now what are the tools and techniques? When you answer exam questions, typically in the exam questions, if given a scenario, they may ask you what techniques can you use? Or given a scenario, um, what document do you produce at the end of it, right? Now, these are questions you need to be able to differentiate between what is, what is tools and techniques, what is an output, excuse me. Tools and techniques is a method, method that you use to perform the process. Output is the document that you produce at the end of the process. So in given an options, they may provide at least a few tools and techniques, or they may provide a few outputs. So depending on the question, if they ask you what is the technique you use to perform the process, you must be able to differentiate. Huh? Tools and technique is a method. Output is a document. So you can eliminate. If they ask for techniques, eliminate the output. Eliminate the documents. Uh, so you have to consider which method is the best method to use. Right? Of course, take care of yourself, uh, you know, give your enough rest, especially before the exam. Some people prefer to book the, the exam, by the way, it's every day is, is available. Huh? So some people prefer to take the exam on Monday. So they have Saturday, Sunday, non working days. They help them to prepare and rest, right? Um, some people prefer to, for me, I prefer to take it. I took it on Friday. I took a couple of days leave to prepare as well as to relax before the exam and I have the weekend to enjoy, right? Party. Of course, I never party, but I still enjoy the weekend after passing the exam. All right, next slide, Smithy. Meetings to avoid, sorry, mistakes to avoid. Now, of course, to do last minute. Huh? So that's why we have this recommended five weeks plan, right? Don't underestimate the exam. It's quite rigorous, it's not that easy. But then again, if you were to be well prepared, then that fear will be gone. Huh? And uh, I know a lot of people who are well prepared easily pass the exam. Right? Practice, practice, practice. So don't skip mock tests, right? Don't ignore your weak areas. All this we have mentioned before. So make sure you focus on some areas that you're weak. Avoid distractors. There are, uh, in the exam questions, there are distractors, they call it like um, 
have an option which is totally nonsense. Huh? Maybe I can just say it uh, bluntly, or they can have a uh, um, red herring, uh, meaning that it, sh it should not be even belong to that uh, list of answers. All right, you can easily tell them um, terms that are not used in project management. Okay, sometimes we need to be aware of that as well. So these are all distractors. And even with these questions, they may be very lengthy and they may include statements which does not really help in the scenario, right? I'm not sure why they want to have all this, right? They should test me whether I know or not. Why you want to throw me off? Huh? Maybe test me whether I want to understand. So maybe that's the purpose. But there are things like this. Huh? So uh, identify the keywords. There's also uh, important tips, right? The keywords and then the question at the end. Sometimes in between, maybe just distractors or extraneous information. No? Don't rush through the questions. As we take note, whether they're asking for something that is not or accept a negative no? or choose two or three answers. Make sure you understand. Ask yourself, based on what I'm reading, what process are they referring to? Okay, Check your understanding. And uh, one more thing I want to add on. Uh, very important to me is, which I always advise whoever attend my training, don't overanalyze. Huh? Don't overthink. This may be, uh, 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 that may end up, you are questioning yourself a lot of times. Okay. Okay. Uh, next slide, Shmiti. All right, so this is a five week plan in summary. All right. First week, maybe about two and a half hours per day. Study, review, revise, um, understand the course uh, exam content outline. You also have access to Knowledge Hub online learning. Second week, you, may, you also have access to flashcard, other associate document that can help. Again, you already have a lot of information, so you have to consider whether you want to go into more. Okay. Uh, sometimes too much information, you have no time. So focus on the um, reference book from PIMBOK. Focus on the training materials okay? and focus on the practice questions. Right? So these three are key to me. Eh? If you can have others, then it's okay. Additional. But don't, don't confuse yourself with too much information. Okay, third week, use the videos to test your understanding on what you have read. You have, uh, hopefully you have actually a weekly one hour session where you can uh, attend to get, uh, to meet with the mentors that can help you clear your doubts. Okay. And uh, finally, you have someone, uh, the mentor, the coach, all right, the subject matter expert helps you to review right, what you have gone through so far, see whether you are more or less ready or not. Huh? Someone to help you to advise you uh, based on what you have done so far. Okay. Next. Why the fifth week? Big week is just to make sure you review. Huh? just like in any project management, all right? You have to plan, and before you implement, you check whatever work needs to be done has been completed, all right? Do the due diligence. So the fifth way will help you to do that. Huh? Uh, review before the project implementation, right? Then decide whether it's a go or no go, all right? Similar to project management. So fifth way helps you to uh, ensure all that, right? Make sure all administrative work has been done, application has been accepted, right? Uh, all the revision uh, based on the five week plan has been, done, four week plan before that has been done. So then you can sit back and relax. Yes, I can't wait for the exam. All right. Okay, about the uh, more exam, uh, sorry, about the PMP exam. Uh, which we also have explained a few times already just now. So just to summarize, they are all situational, almost all of them, right? There will be a scenario for you to read and understand. 
questions that follow process. So understand what process they are referring to and um, maybe what happened after that, all right? Uh, so what's the output of the process or what's the next process related to that process? Okay. Extraneous info, as I mentioned just now, that sometimes you have um, information that are not related to the particular topic or particular process. Huh? They add in just to throw you off. So you need to be able to uh, look out for all that. If you practice a lot of exam questions, you'll be able to see this after a while. Okay. Made up terms, sometimes terms that are not used in, the, in project management may be included in one of the options. Okay, we call this the red herring, uh, totally unrelated, right? So by practicing also helps you to see all this. Of course, you have to understand a lot of terms and terminologies. You will learn through the training and also uh, through the revision and the glossary, right? Most of the questions are multiple choice. Again, uh, be aware whether it's uh, one options, two options, three options. Most of it will be one options, but um, you have to read the questions whether they ask you for more than one. No? Hotspot or fill in the blanks. Okay? They have these new methods. Previously, are uh, all MCQ only. Uh, now there is fill in the blanks. There is uh, mix and match given a certain terms and you match to the definition of the term, uh, you can use arrow to match it. So these are some examples. Next. Great. All right, to understand a bit, uh, also another strategy to help you to understand and answer exam questions is uh, understand some perspective from the PMI uh, view. Uh, PMI way of thinking, sometimes we call it or at the bottom there, there's something called PMIism, right? All right, PM should always evaluate first before action. A lot of questions that give you a scenario and ask you, what should the PM do? What should the PM do first? What should the PM do next? Have uh, What did the PM fail to do, right? So PM, I expect to evaluate huh? before taking action, evaluate the scenarios, evaluate the impact or that particular situation. And then choose the appropriate strategy or appropriate action. Always check against the plan huh, to add on to this first point here. You have a plan. Check whether you are, your plan is proper or not. Do you miss something in your plan? That's why the situation happened. Solve problem now, don't wait. So whenever there is an issue, solve the issue, right? As far as possible, do not uh, wait because it may have worse impact, right? If we were to wait. Maintain a seven leader attitude of principles. This is a leadership styles. Um, it's race, I mean, it's more common in agile, but very useful leadership style to be used in all projects. So what it means is that we are a leader as a project manager, but we need to act as a servant to the project team. We have to serve the project team, right? Make sure that we develop them as individual as well as a group, right? In terms of individual skills and as well as team, ensure the right environment for them so that they can perform their work uh, well. Uh, if there's any obstacles that are preventing them to progress, make sure we have to remove the obstacles, all right? So these are seven leader principles. All right. Uh, since the beginning of uh, Pinbox 6 edition, um, they have added Agile, right? So we need to be aware of what's traditional or predictive or waterfall and what is Agile and what is hybrid. Right? So we will learn this in the uh, training, right? Hybrid is a combination of Agile and traditional, right? Project manager puts interest of project ahead. This is talking about code of ethics, integrity. Always do the right thing. You will have questions in the exam, given scenario like this, right? Um, especially things like um, um, safety issues. What should the PM do? And someone highlight to you that the structure is weak. It may break, all right? So PM always must think of the safety. So stop work and find a solution for that. Even if it delays your project. Okay, don't cut corners. Right? 
PM protects project from unnecessary changes. Change control is a very important topic uh, based on PMI framework, <clears throat> especially in the traditional project management, right? So you might, might must have a proper change control procedures, <clears throat> right, to control change requests so that it does not lead to scope creep, right? So always choose the best answer based on PMI perspective, which is not so easy, right? Sometimes you may have all correct answer. What's the best answer? Right? So you must understand uh, PMI way of thinking. And that helps if you do a lot of practice question. Okay, uh, Smithy, next. Okay, here we have some um, mock tests that you can do live with us as well. So if you're ready to answer some questions, uh, Zach, let's do this. Sure. Let's do right. it. So the first question, if you can see my screen, the first question is what should the project manager do? Please answer the poll. We have just a minute for you all to answer the question. There are some options there given to each of you, if you could answer it for us. And then we'll show you how um, or why the answer was right or wrong. And this is one of Knowledge Hut's USP as well. So once you take the training with us and get uh, the mock test and simulation exam, especially for our mock test, you have multiple attempts. We, you'll be given five mock tests. And every time you answer the question, if it's correct or wrong, we will give you a reasoning as to why your answer was right or wrong. Yeah. A couple of you have answered. We have about 10 seconds more. All right. Thank you, everybody. 50% of you answered. A, which is raise a new risk in the risk register. Let's see if your answer was right or wrong. I mean, it's first. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well. That's okay. Go to yeah. the, go to the, back to the question. Why not? So it's yeah. okay. Now, no, you already on second question, Smithy. You must go back to the first one. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, go there you go. One. Very interesting uh, result from the poll, okay, which is uh, quite understandable. This is why we need to practice a lot of practice questions huh, to understand the structure and the expected answer. So actually the reason for this is that um, the contractor already told the project manager that he un he's unable to deliver. Huh? So it's not a risk because he already told you it's already happening now. Now means in an issue, not a risk, right? So that's why the answer is B. And also is, unless you really need to escalate your sponsor, then you do, but it should not always be the first option. Huh? Always consider other options. If can be resolved within the project team, then resolve it, okay? We, last resort will be consulting the sponsor, right? escalating to the sponsor. So raise and put the issue in the issue log and start to track it and address it. Next one. Yeah. So the next question, after a project team has been working on a project for several months, the project is canceled. The project sponsor is putting pressure on the project manager to perform closeout duties as fast as possible so that the project team can move on to other work. The project sponsor has instructed the team not to waste time archiving the project artifacts for the canceled project. How should the project manager handle this situation?
All right. I think most of you have answered. 10 seconds more. Great. Okay. Zach, for you to see, most yep. of our participants yeah. well, have said uh, D. Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay, so let's try to understand this. All right, so um, the last phrase says that sponsor instruct the team not to waste time archiving the PR defects. So it says, do not archive project defects in the project documentation. We will learn in the training, and also if you read from Pinball, this is a must. Uh, so uh, we have to follow what is based on pinball right, in the training material. So this is a must, means we have to do it, all right? So we have to eliminate those options that uh, go against this um, um, fact, all right? Uh, so first one says uh, document the instruction, which is uh, no point. You're not documenting the project document, just instruction on it. Uh, archive the, on a local computer is so not good because you are uh, not using the project document um, repository, yeah? and you see it's definitely cannot. All right, so the best to select is D. Okay. Go ahead, next one. All right, so the answer was D, and most of you got that correct. So I think you guys are on track to becoming project managers already, <laughs> and Zach is helping you with that. All right, question number three. A new project manager has been assigned to an environmental project. After reviewing the project plan, the project manager notices that health and safety requirements have not been properly addressed. This is a serious concern, and the project manager wants to fix this issue immediately. Why is this situation problematic? Let's see your answers. Okay, we have a few answers, a couple of seconds more, and then let's get on with what the right answer is. All right. Um, Zach, most of our participants think the answer is D. Yeah, well done. Most of you are correct, actually. Okay, great. So I, if, you I, look at the, mm -hmm. if you look at this, uh, it says uh, environmental project and health and safety requirements, right? So option A, just guiding you in terms of selecting option. Uh, is it four metrics? What, what metric is it? Is it defect metrics? Not sure. Not clear. PM must follow um, employers' OPA. OPA can refer to a lot of things like uh, past project documents and all that. So also not very clear. C, injury or loss incident could... Could uh, deliver, yeah, that might happen. So what about D? The project manager is obligated to comply with the project location regulatory requirements. So this is about compliance to, to prevent things from happening. So if we can comply to the uh, project location, meaning either the company or the country, uh, law and regulation, then that will prevent C. So the best answer actually is D. Great. I think most of them got that right also. Yeah. Well done, you guys. <laughs> All right, next question. And then we have a justification as to why not A, B, and C. 
And I think Zach walked us through that already. But even in our mock test on PRISM, which is our learning platform, it's by, by the way, an AI based learning platform. Um, when you answer your mock test and you, know, you find your assessment results, at the end of it, you will be given these justifications as well. So when you're reviewing and revising the topic, you will understand as to why the answer was right or wrong. Okay, last question, why and why not? A hybrid project is used to transit from a current system to a new and enhanced system. The plan is to transit the system in stages. However, the operations team is complaining that they are not ready to start supporting the new system. How should the project manager effectively approach this situation? You have four options and 30 seconds. Let's see how well you guys do on this question. Okay, great. We have a few answers. And Zach, here are the results. Are they right or wrong? Yeah, good. It looks like most of you are prepared and ready for the exam. Great. <laughs> All right, so this question is talking about hybrid project. All right, so we need to understand what is a hybrid project. All right, and, and also it says that uh, transition is done in stages. So a hybrid project is a combination of traditional and agile. In agile, there are multiple releases. So that means it's released in stages. All right, so this part is the agile portion. Huh? So the supporting support team may not be ready. So we have to think about their multiple um, implementation and releases. So what can you do huh, to, to in this situation? So first option say create lesson learn um, to include option in a, for future project. This doesn't say when it's being done. So most of the time it might happen at the end of the project where you get a lessons learned. So it doesn't help in terms of stages, right? And um, C, detailed documentation to be shared with the operation team during project. Again, this is end of the project. So it doesn't cover the stages. D, change measure plan to add final stage for product handoff to the operation. This again, talking about the final stage only at the end. It does not cover all the stages, right? So the correct answer, as most of you have got it, is B, all right? Uh, involve the team and uh, transfer whatever they need to know in every stage of the release. Somebody has raised their hand as well. You can leave your questions in uh, the Q&A. Mabasa, if you wanna ask us a question. Oh, got it. We're also asking you if you agree. So if you agreed, you raise your hand. Thank you. All right. And then we have a justification as to why not A, C, and D as well. All right, ladies and gentlemen, with that, we come to the end of the mock test that we had through this. But if you enroll with us, we will give you five mock tests that have multiple attempts and give you reasoning as to why your answers were right or wrong. A quick recap of the easy step-by-step, -step, um, you know, to take uh, steps to take through your PMP certification journey is one to get those PDUs, which means you have to attend our training, follow the directions given in the five-week exam guaranteed study plan, complete two to three mock uh, exams and simulation exams, we suggest that you do like get 75 to 80% so that, you know, it will help you um, be confident to write the main examination. And then lastly, you get a sign off from our in-house mentor and only then attend the examination. Zach, do you want to add anything here? Um, not really. Um, again, the suggested is a recommendation, all right? 
Mm -hmm. uh, but it depends on uh, personal preference. Huh? Right. But, uh, there's no there's no official target from PMI perspective. Huh? Uh, nobody asked that question, but just add on, right? So there's no official uh, score to pass the exam, right? Because um, uh, PMI has their own uh, algorithm uh, to decide whether pass or fail. So there's no official number, but it's a good target to target between 70 to 80%, right? To, right. To, yeah, to tell whether you're ready or not. Correct. Right. Uh, before we move on to this slide, just want to say thank you so much, Zach, for uh, walking our participants through this uh, very interactive session and making them understand how important a study plan is and also giving them some mock tests and helping them understand uh, how PMP could be for them. Yeah, You're thank you so welcome. much, Zach, for your time. My pleasure. Um, very welcome. We really appreciate your time. Uh, for those of you who are still part of this masterclass, thank you so much for staying this long. Like I said, we have just a few more slides to cover, but I, as I promised at the start of the session, what you will get because you've been uh, attending our masterclass is that one, you will get a PMP toolkit, which has some case studies and references that you can go through. We will give you one simulation, free simulation exam, which is very close to the main PMP examination, right? If you go through with that, and if you think you're ready for the PMP exam, you can definitely uh, attempt the examination. And last but not the least is that you get a 30 minute one-on-one -on -one session with one of our uh, trainers from Knowledge Heart. We'll schedule that for you. Maybe if you're lucky, you'll get Zach as well, but we'll have to you know, ask him about his time and see how that works. Um, what we also want to tell you is that there are a lot of companies in the world, you know, that can probably promise you the moon, but may not take you there, right? But Knowledge Heart is not like that. We are a company that is focused and very, you know, outcomes are very, very important to us, which is why if you look at our other programs, for example, if you look at Certified Scrum Master on our website, uh, highlighted in red there is that we're saying you will be able to ace your Certified Scrum Master examination in the first go. That's the outcome-based learning that we're giving you. When it comes to PMP, we're talking about a guaranteed exam success. If you follow our five-week study plan, you will be able to ace your PMP examination in the very first go. Even for our uh, tech programs, you know, that are non-cert, for example, we do provide job prep support as well. So once you finish the training with us, we will give you a preparation support so that you are able to crack your interviews and get good lucrative offers in the market, right? Uh, for Singapore, you know, we've tied up with the government and we have some subsidies in place for all of you. So if you are from Singapore, please note that uh, PMP is uh, approved under IBF. And for those of you who are Singaporeans above the age of 40, you get a 70% subsidy from IBF. And if you are Singaporean or a Singaporean below the age of 39 years or below, or uh, a PR of Singapore, then you get 50% subsidy from IBF. Um, if you're Singaporean and you have SkillsFuture credit handy, after you finish, uh, after we you know, bring down the prices after subsidy, you can also use your SkillsFuture credit to offset this entire amount. We also have tied up with NTUC and we, you can take UTAP support. So if you're an NTUC member, after IBF subsidy, after you've claimed SkillsFuture, if there's still an amount that you've paid using your money cash that you've paid online, you can get a 50% claim back. Again, if you are 39 years below, you'd get uh, up to $250. And if you are a above 40, it would be up to 500 SGD. But if you want more information about the subsidies and how you can go about, uh, you know, doing the PMP training with us, claiming the subsidies, using SkillsFuture and UTAP support, please get in touch with me or the team and we'd be happy to help you. You can reach us at knowledgehut.com. Um, what we're offering you through this uh, certification training is that you will get, uh, you know, be able to finish your PMP examination, a guaranteed past five week study plan is given to you and Knowledge Hut has a success rate of 98%. So if you go through with the training with us, you can be rest assured to, to crack that PMP examination in your very first go. Uh, we worked with 
all of these numbers in the past, you know, um, over 450,000 alumni from Knowledge Hat, 4,500 enterprise partners, and we've reached out to more than 100 countries. Singapore is very special to us because we work very closely with them. Well, every region is, is uh, you know, special, but uh, since I work in the Singapore region and I've been in touch with most of the people from there, it's very special to me. And this masterclass is also very, very special. Uh, we actually had this fact where one of our alumni got the highest pay package of $500,000 and it was a big milestone for Knowledge Hat to receive this kind of credit. Um, we spoke about IBF, um, the STS scheme. We, uh, it is also an SSG ATO that provides a UTAP and SFC support for those of you from Singapore, you would be very familiar uh, with these terms and Knowledge Art is one of the few edtech providers that is accredi accredited under this scheme, right? Uh, our full-time curriculum uh, development team and product team spends hours and hours to curate the app training approach before receiving this approval. We actually have a few more courses that are yet to be approved from SSG. We're going to get that shortly as well. In Singapore, Knowledge Hut is also the exclusive delivery partner uh, for uh, PMP training for Singapore Polytechnique. So you can imagine how, how big we are in Singapore, right? We have some university partners. If you can look at my screen, we've tied up with all of them. Uh, we've also worked with 5,000 plus enterprise partners in the past, and we're currently working with all of these too. Um, a very important part of this masterclass is for you all to understand PRISM, right? PRISM is an in-house AI built learning mechanism, which uh, is will be used by participants who uh, enroll with Knowledge Hat. So once you finish your training, with Knowledge Hat, or as soon as you uh, you know register with Knowledge Hat, you will get lifetime access to this learning portal, which is called Prism. Once you have access to Prism, uh, you will get self-paced learning content if you choose. I mean, it depends on the kind of uh, training that you choose. But for PMP, for example, you will get self-paced learning content, and then you will also get a recorded session of the class that you attend. We give you five mock test, five simulation exams, 2,000 questions to a question bank that has the uh, most frequent questions from PMI. We also recently added a golden ticket from PMI, which means uh, if you register with us, we have a golden ticket to 180 plus recent questions from PMI as well. So all of these things that I am talking about will be available to you on PRISM. If I could just quickly walk you through how that looks, if you can see my screen again, this is how PMI will look. So you go to, um, you know, home and go to your courses. So if you've, if you've taken PMP, you'll see your mock tests here, you'll see your simulation exams, right? And the other uh, options that I said. So if you click on a mock test and you're attempting this mock test, for example, right? Let me retake this assessment because I want to show you. So there are so many questions here that you need to answer. So let's say I want to answer the first question. In a project lifecycle, when is the sprint finished? I, I don't really know the answer. So I'm just going to click on option one. And then I'm going to finish the assessment so that, you know, you'll be able to see what I say. So once I submit, I'd like to understand what my result is. So if I go down and see, I've answered the first question wrong. And the reason my answer was wrong is here. And the right question is uh, mentioned to, I mean, the right answer or the right option is given to you as well. So for each of these questions, you will be able to understand where you went wrong. And then you can retake uh, this mock test till you feel confident to take the simulation exam. All right, going back to our PPT, um, we want to tell you that 
this PMP examination is not easy, but uh, ladies and gentlemen, PMP is here to stay and it is worth every effort, right? We told you what the value of PMP is. And for those of you who have attended this masterclass, you know it's not going to be easy, but our five week study plan, simulation tests that we have, mock tests that we have, the question back that we have to offer, the golden ticket to PMI, all of these. And of course, we have amazing trainers who are going to help you, will definitely help you clear your examination in the first go. Uh, thank you so much for your time, ladies and gentlemen. Your feedback is very essential for us to improve and make our work better. So there will be a feedback form that will be rolled out in the chat. Please give us your feedback so that we can do better. Um, these are a few te testimonials for Zach. And I think Zach should be really proud that he's received all of this from our participants. They say he's always used real life examples and uh, his examples are also very useful and engaging. He is very experienced and you know, has many years of experience in project management and his classes are very interactive and effective. He uses multiple approaches to engage with the students and does a recap at the start of each day. Um, Zach, that, that was all about you, and we're so glad that you could be with us this evening. Very thank you. Welcome, and thank you again. Yes. Uh, this is a quick comparison uh, chart that we've done with others, apart from Knowledge Hat. So if you can look at my screen, you'll see what's there for you, what's in store if you register with us. You will have regular doubt clearing sessions with the mentor. I already mentioned that you will have a PMI exam application. Uh, we have a few minutes. If there are any other questions left for those of you who'd like to get them answered by Zach, you can post your questions in the Q&A box. We'd be happy to take that now. A couple of more seconds. No questions from anybody? All of you are uh, good to go with the session. Zach, do you have any questions for the audience? Um, no questions, but uh, uh, a bit of advice. Yep. All right. So uh, take the most important steps. Uh, again, firstly, I uh, welcome everyone again for attending this uh, masterclass. Take the very most important step, which is attend the training. All right. Once you attend the training, not only do you get the knowledge, but you also learn how to tackle the PMP exam, right? And also get a lot of guidance from uh, Knowledge Heart. To prepare you for the exam, all right? So you'll be more or less ready at the end of it. All right? So all the best and good luck. Great. Um, okay, as promised at the start of the session, you will get a PMP toolkit from us. You will get one free simulation exam. And also if you're interested in a one-on-one -on -one with our mentors, a 30 minute one-on-one -on -one can be scheduled. An email will be sent to all of you with these details, you will get it from us. Uh, please use the feedback form to give us your feedback. We'd love to hear from you. And if nobody has any other questions, we'll uh, wrap this up, right? These are the bonuses as promised. PMP toolkit, exam simulation, and a one-on-one -on -one with our expert. Enroll with us and uh, be assured to pass your examination in the very first go, right? If you don't have questions now and you want to pack them for later, please reach us at knowledgehat.com. Once again, uh, Zach, on behalf of Knowledge Hat and everyone who has attended this training today, we'd love to have another masterclass with you so people can benefit from this again. But thank you so much for your time uh, today. And I'm sure all of them have had a ball. Thank my you. My pleasure. My pleasure. All the best. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, we have left the feedback link in the chat box. Your feedback is important. So please leave your feedback for us. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful evening. And uh, we will see you soon in our training if you join us. Enroll now and make the best of it. Thanks, everybody. Cheers.